good morning. Good to see you this morning. I'm glad that you're here on this uh, um, winter break Sunday. It's winter break for schools, and we know what that means around here. Bam, 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 they're gone. Uh, but I am uh, glad you're here today, and uh, we had just a great week. Uh, uh, Kendra and I had a blast uh, being, a being able to be away for a few days uh, this past week down at Gulf Shores. And you, you kind of getting down the road a little bit, you start feeling that stress relief a little bit, and, and then you get there, and boy, you're really enjoying it, and you're thinking, thank the Lord, I'm away from all them deacons and, and all them folks. And, and then you're walking, down, you're walking down the beach, and you look up, and you see, that sure looks like Barry Donor. <laughs> and, uh, and then I said, nah. And so I, we, we were picking up shells and all that kind of stuff. So we kept right on walking. And next thing we know, we heard this, hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even get away from them down there. <laughs> but it was, it was so funny to be able to run into Barry and Mignon there. And, and we, you know what we forgot to do? Kendra and I said, we should have took a selfie while we were down there. You took a picture of us walking away. OK. <laughs> hey, y'all were, were as glad to walk away as we were. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, they were probably thinking, I'm glad we weren't doing anything wrong, because they're kind of a preacher. Uh, anyway, we had, uh, we had fun. and. Uh, we come back refreshed and, and uh, just excited to be able to be here this morning, but it was a wonderful, wonderful time. It's the only time I've been to the beach where it was 30 degrees outside and 20 mile an hour winds, but uh, it, was, it, was still, it was still good. And I will tell you this, to be honest with you, this is the time to go. If you want to go to eat, this is the time to go, because there ain't nobody in the restaurants. And so you get to go and walk right on in, and Kendra and I felt really, really good because we were the youngest ones around. And uh, so, anyway, all right. Well, thank you for being here. I welcome you here today. We're going to have an exciting time of worship. Man, God's going to show up in a marvelous way. He already has in Bible study, and we're looking forward to, uh, to now. Uh, Mark, come on. Mark's going to share with us a quick announcement about, I know what he's going to talk about. How y'all doing? Good morning. I got some, some announcements to make. Uh, I know we went last year, we didn't have the men's and boys rally, and everybody's been asking about it, but I got good news. We're going to have the men's and boys rally March the 12th. So mark your calendars. Doors open at 5 o'clock. We'll eat at 6. And we're blessed to have Casey Johnson from Hunt Real TV Outdoors to come speak. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be great. We'll have, eat pulled pork sandwiches. Uh, we'll have door prizes. And uh, tickets are $10. Ages 12 and under do not have to pay for the tickets. But they have to have one. So whenever you get a ticket for yourself, make sure you get one for your child, grandchild. Uh, but uh, anyhow, uh, we need your help. We need, uh, we want to put up a slideshow that, uh, for everybody. So if you got pictures of outdoors, you know, I don't care if it's fishing or hunting or what, send the pictures to us that uh, we can get the pictures of the hunting trips, the fishing trips, whatever, and have a slideshow, especially those youngins. I've been taking a lot of my grandkids here lately, so I'll be putting some of mine. I know all the grandparents will want to do the same. But uh, also, we're going to need uh, some deer mounts. We're, uh, our theme this year is going to be deer hunting again, so we need some deer heads and some skull mounts and some horns if you have them. Anything that would be interested, uh, I need you to start praying now for the men's and boys rally that souls will be saved, that God's hand will be all over this and, and anoint this place that day and that night. And, uh, and also, uh, flyers. On Facebook, uh, there's a flyer on there looks like this if you would share it and uh, and get a ticket uh, for someone I don't, I don't I don't care if you buy 10 tickets or one ticket but share it and give it to someone that's lost someone that needs Jesus and uh, and pray for them. 
not just get them a ticket, but pray for them. Pray for that ticket before you give it to them. And uh, we uh, have tickets going to go on sale today. I got good news and bad news about that. Well, the good news, I have tickets. But the bad news is I brought the wrong ones to church today, so you'll have to get them tonight. So uh, they'll be here tonight. Uh, they'll be here Wednesday night. All you guys that's on the men's committee, would you please stand up? Okay, these guys right here are the guys that you can go to for tickets tonight. And uh, there's some other guys that's not in here right now. So uh, anyhow, uh, Brother Larry, we're very blessed to have Brother Larry. He picks out songs for us to sing all the time. And he's chosen the song this morning. If you will, listen to the words. It was a song will bless your heart. Thank you. Let's pray together. Thank you so much, Father, for the chance to be able to be here today. May you be glorified in this place. God, I pray for our men's rally. I pray that uh, lives will be changed as a result. I pray for our mission trips that are coming up. I pray for our revival that's coming up. Lord, all these things, we want to glorify the name of Jesus. I pray you be blessed here today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together, if you will. Let's just worship the Lord this morning.
will. My Father.
Thank you. You may be seated.
If we just do that, God would turn this world around. As the choir comes down, let's just worship him, the majesty and glory of your name.
For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to those that are being saved, it is the power of God. That's what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. He went on to say, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. I don't know about you today, but after I've heard the music today that I've heard, it encourages me to be willing to step out in faith and trust the Lord for what's ahead of us. God has many things that he has for our body of believers in the days ahead. We step out in faith, trusting him that he's going to move and work. And as we have these events coming up, such as the men's rally, we're stepping out in faith, trusting God to move. We got folks going to Honduras and on to Romania. Revival coming up. Crusade coming up. Some people would say, man, you're crazy to be trying to plan something like that. We step out in faith, trusting, believing. God said he would be with us. And we believe it. And that's enough. That settles it. What a great time we've had already today. But we're able to do that. We're able to step out in faith. We're able to trust in him and believe in him because of what he accomplished on the cross. There have been many mountain peaks in Scripture. You go through studying the Scripture, you got Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is the mountain where Moses and the people of Israel received the law. That was quite a mountaintop experience. You go reading that, and, and the Bible says that they couldn't even come close to the mountain. Don't come close to the mountain. If you do, you're going to die because of the holiness and the presence of the Lord Jesus. And then there was Mount Tabor. If you've been in our study on Wednesday nights, you know that Mount Tabor was a special mountain because it was there that Sisera was defeated by two unlikely people that would lead the people of Israel, Barak and Deborah. That was a special mountain. And then there was Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel was the place where Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal. Man, what a great moment that was when, when he prayed and the fire came down and lit the sacrifice and reminding them, letting them know that God is God. Our God is God. That was a mountaintop. There was the Mount of Transfiguration at Mount Hermon. When Peter and James and John would see, the Lord literally transcended and they were able to experience some of his glory on that Mount Hermon. But the mount that towers above all other mounts is Mount Calvary. And that's what we're come to think about today. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, Paul deals with the foolishness of men. He's going to contrast the foolishness of men with the wisdom of God. Throughout these verses, he will contrast God's true wisdom with man's supposed wisdom. And, and then he's going to contrast God's supposed foolishness that, that man says that all of this is with man's true foolishness. So all those verses, he's going to do that contrast back and forth. But here's the, here's the main point that is that, that God would be able to take human form, that he would be crucified and raised from the dead in order to provide for, for man forgiveness and an entrance into heaven is too simple for man. It is too simple for the natural man to believe. There are folks out there that will simply say that's just not possible. That God could come in human form, 
that there he could literally die on a piece of wood on an ordinary hill in an ordinary part of the world and determine the eternal destiny for all of mankind. That's the foolishness of God, isn't it? That's the foolishness of God. That, that it would be through the foolishness of preaching. It would be through the foolishness that what men would say of the cross that Jesus died and he provided for us eternal life. The natural man says this about God's plan, that it's stupid. That God's plan is stupid, that it's an utter impossibility for that to be the case. Now, the, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. Now, let's take that word just for a second. What Paul said, the preaching of the cross or the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are unbelievers. What does that word mean? The word foolish, we, we get, it comes from the Greek word which means moronic. You are a moron if you believe it. Now, you got to remember where Paul was dealing with all these people. He was dealing with the Greeks. He, he was in, had been in Athens. He's spending time in Corinth. And he's around all of these philosophers and all these people that think that they know everything. And he continues, though, to preach the simple but profound truth. In other words, Paul doesn't back up. They're saying you're a moron if you preach this. You're a moron if you believe this. And there are people in the world that think the same thing about you today. If you believe this with all of your heart. But Paul didn't back up. He continued to preach on the fact that it is the cross. The message of the cross is that which saves what Jesus did for us there. So listen to me. It's still nonsense to many today. It's nonsense to me. Let me tell you something about our world and our society. We live in a society that teaches humanism, not holiness. We live in a society that teaches it's all about what man wants versus what God wants. We live in a society where it's about man's brilliance and not about man's need for a Savior that died on a cross 2,000 years ago. We're so smart, we don't need that. Instead, our society today looks to sociology. Our society today, instead of looking to the cross, looks to psychology. Instead of looking to the cross and what Jesus did for us on the cross, the world looks today to philosophy. And we believe that all the answers today for the man's problems is found in education. Or maybe the answers are found in the politicians that are in Baton Rouge and, and in Washington, D.C. Some would even say that I, don't, I can't believe that, that God would literally come to this earth and, and be, born, uh, be born in Bethlehem and, and die upon the old rugged cross. I just can't believe that. And so they turn to the occult. They, they turn to the occult. Uh, they, 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 they turn literally to the demonic on the opposite side because they say this is moronic to believe that this could be the case. But the message of Paul to the Corinthians, what I would say one of the key verses in the book of, of 1 Corinthians in the letter would be right there in verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those of us that are being saved, it is a power of God. The cross has never lost its power. <laughs> Let me share with you very quickly. This, this is not going to take too long. Here, here, here's the first thing I want you to notice. Is that the cross is God's supreme declaration to man. It is the supreme declaration to man. I want you to go over to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, this incredible verse of the Scripture. Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, God, who at various times and various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself, watch this, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels as he was by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. The cross is a supreme declaration to men. Here's what the cross, the cross declares. The cross declares man's guilt. The cross declares man's guilt. On the cross, man's sin debt is tallied up. Get on the ad machine. Tallying up all of man's sin debt. And what we discover is this is man is bankrupt in his ability to do anything about his sin problem. You, there's so much sin. As we tally up, so much sin that we find when we get into it, we consider who we are, that we are bankrupt. That, that we had to have something happen to be able to help us. There was a Catholic scholar that said this, and it's an amazing statement. He said, anyone who denies his part in the crucifixion also excludes himself for any need of or sharing, it, sharing in redemption. There are folks today that I have nothing really to do with the cross. That, that doesn't concern me. Well, if you have that belief that, that you have nothing to do with the cross, then you can't share in the redemption of the cross. I want to tell you that I admit, I know I was there when he was crucified. I was there. It was my sin that placed him there. And because my understanding of that, and I've trusted in him to be my Lord and Savior, I get to experience in the redemption that comes through the cross. We need to understand, folks, what our sin does. Paul's going to deal a lot in here with the sin in the church. And I'm going to tell you, in the coming weeks, you're going to get very uncomfortable. I'm going to get very uncomfortable preaching, and I'm going to get very uncomfortable thinking about it in my own life because he's going to deal with the sin issue that, that exists in the church. We need to understand what our individual sin does. My individual sin and your individual sin put Jesus on that piece of wood that we talked about. There was a man that was driving drunk, driving drunk with his wife and his two little children in the vehicle. And she begged him, slow down, slow down, stop. And he refused. And he wrecked the vehicle. He survived. His wife and his two children died. He got to the funeral and saw those three caskets there with their bodies lying in the caskets. And he said, I never really understood what my sin caused. We need to come to grips with the sin issue and repent. He never understood what his sin would cause. Now, now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump off into that into that alcohol thing today. But let me tell you something. When you get involved with alcohol, you don't understand what your sin may cause. Like it or not, fire me or not, I'll go back to the beach. I'll go lay up some more. But then the cross also declares not only man's guilt, the cross declares man's hopelessness. It declares man's hopelessness. Jesus died on the cross because man is rendered helpless. I'm helpless by my own sin. My morality and my goodness are not good enough to be able to settle the sin debt of my life. 
Now, I'm looking around. I'm thinking probably most everybody in here, we're pretty good dudes. We, we, we pretty good folks. Pretty good ain't going to cut it. Being a member of Sweetwater Baptist Church is not going to cut it. Being baptized is not going to cut it. G giving money to the church is not going to cut it. Our sin debt is paid by the fact that we look to Jesus on the cross and we trust what he did on the cross for our salvation. All the Israelites in the Old Testament, remember the story? They were being bitten by the serpents. They had rebelled against God and God was judging them. They were being bitten by the serpents, and God says, I'll tell you what, you go build, you, you put up a brazen serpent out there in the wilderness, and everybody look at that serpent to be healed. Now, that's not real complicated, is it? Can you imagine those folks, they're being bitten by serpents, and they say, uh, all we, we got to do is just look. Just look. They were helpless to help themselves. They were dying left and right. They could not help themselves. And so their only hope, the Bible says, is looking to that brazen serpent. And so they looked at that serpent and they were healed. Folks, I want to tell you that that is the picture of Jesus. That is a picture of Jesus in the Old Testament, that if you look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, if you look to Jesus when he's on the cross, we will be healed. We must confess our helplessness by looking to the cross. But also the cross declares God's justice. It declares God's justice. You see, our sin called for drastic action. My sin called for drastic action. And the drastic action that was taken by God was that he was going to take the penalty of our sin upon himself. He's going to do that. He's going to take the penalty of your sin and my sin upon himself by placing that sin on his son. And his son... Our Lord and Savior, Jesus, paid the price for us. The law says in Ezekiel 18, 4, that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Well, if we stopped right there, be no reason for us to be here today, would it? <clears throat> the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And, and you know what? Um, Romans 6, 23 says that the wages of sin is death. So stop there, close up the book, let's go home. There's no reason for us to be here. However, however, someone who had no sin would be required to die in our place. And that's where the Son of God stepped up having no sin. No guilt whatsoever for any sin. Stepped up and took our place and died for us. That was required for us, and Jesus did it for us. And then the cross declares God's love. The cross declares God's love. He could have called 10,000 angels. We heard that song last week, didn't we? He could have called 10,000 angels. Imagine, Jesus on the cross, could he have stopped it? Could he have said, I'm done? When they were beating him prior to the, prior to the cross, could he have said, nope, I ain't not doing it? He could have gone back to heaven. He could have gone back, sat down. But no, that's not what he did. Out of his love for us, he sought to save sinners. Listen, because Jesus loved you so much, he died for you. Took, his, took your sins upon himself. That's why we say, for God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. What an incredible verse. The cross, listen to me, friends, is the only remedy. And then the cross is God's supreme offer to man. 
The cross is God's supreme offer to man. No wonder, no wonder Paul starts off this writing to the Corinthians by focusing in on the cross because God offers his hand to men in sin. God has offered his hand to men in sin and offers salvation. Listen to me. He also offers salvation to anyone who will believe. Anybody will believe. He offers that salvation to you today. If you've come into this building today and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, he is, listen to me, he is offering to you today. He said, I did this for you. All you have to do is trust me. Believe with all of your heart. The Bible makes it so plain, doesn't it? Again, Paul didn't change the way he preached. He didn't change the message because everybody thought he was foolish. He stood up on Mars Hill in Athens. He stood up there in Corinth and he kept on preaching the simple message. Reminded of a story that I've read before. Uh, the captain of an old, uh, old sea captain lying in his sea vessel in his cabin dying. Knowing that, that from um, any moment... He could be dying. He was that sick. And he asked the crew, he said, does anybody in here have a Bible? The cabin boy. The only crew member who had a Bible was brought to the captain. Looking at the boy with a Bible in his hand, the old dying captain asked this, son, can you find something in that book that will help a man that's dying? Immediately, that cabin boy turned to Isaiah chapter 53. And he read it through slowly. And the old captain was listening intently. He said, that's pretty, but I'm not sure I understand. And then this is what the cabin boy said. He said, then I want you to listen one more time. And this time, I want you to repeat after me. And he read the chapter again, changing only one word. Listen to me. Surely he hath borne my griefs and carried my sorrows. But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes I am healed. Suddenly the old sea captain had been following along with a weak voice, said, Wait a minute, young man. I think I have it. He was wounded for my transgressions. And with his stripes, I am healed. Jesus took my place on the cross and gave me salvation. He caught the message of the cross and gave his life to Jesus in his dying moments. Do we understand? He took my sin, my sorrows. He took everything that I needed for him to take for me to be saved. Now the cross is God's supreme power among men. It endures. The cross endures. The cross knows no failures. I, I want you to understand that for 2,000 years, for 2,000 years, the forces of hell have unleashed their fury on this story. But the cross, the message of the cross still stands. They've tried everything. The Romans tried to squelch it. The Greeks tried to squelch it. Hitler tried to squelch it. The communists have tried to squelch it. No matter what the Chinese do over there, no matter what the Afghanis do, no matter what the Iranians do, no matter what the Iraqis do, no matter what the Sudanese do, no matter what they do anywhere else in the world, that is that the message of the cross will never be crushed. 
It's still the only answer for man's sin. Stands forever is a power to save. It attracts. The message of the cross is the most attractive message proclaimed among men. Let me tell you, I can, I can go, and I will be going in just a few weeks to preach this same message in the, in the, the villages of Romania. And in those villages in Romania, they're going to hear this very special message of the cross. And it is attractive to them. They will come to understand that they can be saved. I can go into the bush of Malawi and preach this same message. And the Holy Spirit gets a hold of it. And lives are changed. This same message will be preached in this church because we know that God gets a hold of it through his Holy Spirit and lives are changed. That's why when Scotty McDowell comes here and preaches our revival in May, he's going to preach on the cross. When Bill Britt comes and he preaches our crusade in the fall, he's going to preach on the cross. That's why the great W.A. Criswell said that every sermon he ever preached always came back down to the cross. It has power. It lifts men up out of the dungeon of despair. Maybe you were in the dungeon of despair before you got saved. Lifts us up out of hopelessness. Lifts us up out of the pit. Lifts, up, lifts, lifts us up out of hell. You know, you just, before you get saved, you're just one breath away. You know that? You're just one breath away. From the pit of hell. It's timeless. It still attracts. The old rugged cross still saves. The old rugged cross made the difference. The old rugged cross still makes the difference. And then the old rugged cross changes me. It changes me. Changed Simon the fisherman to being Peter the fisher of men, didn't it? It changed Saul the, the persecutor of the church to Paul the apostle to the Gentiles. It saved John Newton, an old slave trader, to the one who was able to write, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Here's my question for you. Can you add your name to that list? Have you been changed by the power of the cross? Have you been saved by the power of the cross? There's a great old hymn that says, I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me, how he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. I was lost, but Jesus found me, amen. Found the sheep that went astray, threw his loving arms around me and drew me back into his way. I was bruised, but Jesus healed me. Faint was I from many a fall. Sight was gone and fears possessed me. But he freed me from them all. He will keep me till the river rolls its waters at my feet. Then he'll bear me safely over where the loved ones I shall meet. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. Are you counted along with Peter? Of a life that's been changed. Has the, has the cross changed you like it changed Saul of Tarsus? Or John Newton... If, if you say today, I know, I know that my life has been changed because of the power of the cross, 
I want you to stand up and don't be ashamed. Your life has been changed by the power of the cross. Say amen. amen. Your life has been changed by the power of the cross. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank God. I've been saved, born again, changed by the power of the cross. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Would you just bow your head just for a moment? Some of you may be standing right now. You say, well, you know, everybody else stood in this place, so I guess I better stand. Don't want somebody looking around and saying, oh, you didn't stand. Maybe you would say, you know what, I... I I've never really given my life to Jesus. You need to come home to him today. Jesus, he, he died on that cross for you. He paid the price for you. It's the most attractive, most incredible story the world has ever known. surrendered your life to Jesus. While you're standing, would you just make your way